using phonological awareness levels to inform reading instruction. In this video, we'll cover some of the main takeaways from Chapter 5 in Equipped for Reading Success by David Kilpatrick. The objectives of this video are first to identify different types of instructional reading approaches, and then we'll examine how to use the past assessment to decide which type of reading instruction would most likely be appropriate for students. We have three different instructional reading approaches we're going to go over on this slide. The first is the linguistic approach or the word family approach. So you're going to be using word families, like this is the, an example of the Anne family and um, a limited number of irregularly spelled words, which would be to and the would be the examples of those, and the students would read word families. Dan ran to the van. So that would be an example of the linguistic approach. And then you have the phonics approach, which most people I think are familiar with, where you're talking about your controlled decodable text that's reinforcing a phonics concept, as well as integrating some irregularly spelled words. So this would be an example that said, Tom can shop for hot dogs. This is something you might have introduced after the short O. Um, maybe you're introducing the SH digraph. So that's an example of a sentence that you might find in um, a text that's the phonics approach. And then you have your uncontrolled text. And these are your leveled readers. You have a variety of phonics patterns, and you're going to also have some prefixes and suffixes all different kinds of patterns thrown in there. A large group of children gathered on the playground. So that would be an example of a sentence you might see in an uncontrolled text. On this slide, we're going to be looking at a chart that you can find on page 48 from Equipped for Reading Success. And this is just a general guideline for your typically developing student, what the grade level is, the activities that they're able to complete, and then once they can complete those activities, those phonological awareness activities, what kind of material would be appropriate for reading. Now, just a word of caution with this. I have reached out to Mr. Kilpatrick about this because I wanted to make sure I was interpreting this chart correctly. And he wants to make sure that people are really seeing this as a general guideline. This is not based on normed data. So this is based on his personal experience and work in schools where students were not trained in phonological awareness. So just keep in mind that depending on the school where you teach, the results might be a little bit different because if you're working in a school where you are actively training kids at the kindergarten level and the first grade level and maybe even second grade in phonological awareness, then you're going to probably see higher scores than this. So this is really based on working with students who did not receive any training in phonological awareness. And these are your typically developing students without that phonological awareness training. So it's just important to kind of see this chart from that perspective. So we have pre-K to early kindergarten. These are students working at that syllable level. And at that point, we really should be focusing on reading to students and teaching them their letters, their sounds, letter formation, concepts of print. Late K to early first, this is the onset rhyme level. Once students are really proficient at that onset rhyme level, then they're ready for the linguistic approach to reading. Then we have mid first to late first, and these are students who are working at that phoneme level, basic phoneme level. And for these students, we're focusing on a phonics approach, and we really are spending most of first grade teaching students phonics, like really exposing them to the code and giving them that decodable controlled text. And then we have late first all the way up through early third for some, and those students are working at the advanced phoneme level. And at this point, when students are really in that advanced, um, advanced phoneme level and they're proficient in most of those levels, they really can do any kind of reading. We're ready for that uncontrolled text and those trade books. Now keep in mind, there's going to be a huge range of what your students can do based on the population you have, whether or not they've had any kind of phonological awareness training, whether or not there is a systematic phonics program. So there are a lot of variables. The point here is that when you know what the child's level of phonological awareness is, you can better choose text that will support them. 
because I know if you're a first grade teacher out there, I know I've seen it myself. In the beginning of first grade, a lot of kids are not ready for those uncontrolled texts. And yet, so many schools used those, use those uncontrolled texts and the kids are very frustrated. And then we get into the case where they're looking at the picture and they're guessing because they can't read the words. So it's really about just knowing your students, knowing how to best teach them based on where they are. And so you'll avoid a lot of frustration with you and also with the students because they feel extremely frustrated when they're given text they just can't read. So this is just one other tool that you have now in your tool belt to help you choose the most appropriate text for students. On this slide, I've just taken the information from the previous slide and organized it by grade level, shown what to expect for the from the beginning to mid-year and then mid to the end of the year. And again, this varies greatly depending on your student population, depending on how much training has happened with phonological awareness um, in your primary program. So for kindergarten, again, we have the syllable level and students are mostly being read to here. Um, they're learning their letter names and sounds. And then we're moving on to the onset rhyme level and the linguistic approach. The beginning of first grade, most of our students really benefit from using that linguistic approach. And then once they're able to do those basic phoneme level skills, then we can move on to more of the phonics approach. Now, having worked in several different schools with students who came in mostly very prepared, um, having gone to preschool, many of the students by the time you know, November rolled around, many of them were ready for that phonics approach and, and even the uncontrolled text. So again, it really depends on your student population and what kind of exposure they've had before they've actually entered school. If you have students who have gone to excellent preschool programs, you're going to see higher results. Uh, if you have students who have received phonological awareness training in kindergarten, you're going to see better results here. So just keep that in mind. This is just a guideline. And then we have second grade and most of our students are ready for that uncontrolled text with the exception of maybe students who are struggling. Uh, I taught second grade for 10 years so I can tell you most of my students were ready to go with uncontrolled text and had even been reading uncontrolled text by the end of first grade. But again, it was really a program where there was phonics there was phonological awareness and kids came from homes where they had attended preschool. So it was dealing with a, a student population um, where there was just a lot of explicit instruction. So in my experience, most second graders were able to read that uncontrolled text. Here's an example of a first grader that I assessed. This is the beginning of first grade. And you can see that the student was unable to successfully complete the syllable level here. We had um, two correct, one automatic, and then we had zero correct or automatic. The student was able to do some of the level E, um, two of the E2s and one of the E3. So this student had some syllable knowledge, but was not really secure on all of it. And then we had the onset rhyme, the student was not able to complete any of those skills. Now, as I said earlier, we're using phonological awareness to inform our reading instruction. We would also wanna do a phonics assessment, which I did with this student, but I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this just based on what you're seeing here. So not taking into account how the student did on any kind of phonics assessment, but just look, looking at that level of phonological awareness. Let's take a minute to pause the video and discuss where we think this student should be. What type of reading instruction? Do you think this is a student based on this that is likely to be really a student that still needs to learn letters and sounds? Or do you think this is a student that's probably ready for the linguistic approach? or the phonics approach or reading uncontrolled text. So let's pause and discuss. Now this is a second grader, again, the beginning of the school year. And you can see the scores are kind of interesting. There's, there's, um, there isn't really one place where the student has difficulty and stops. Um, you can see there's sort of spotty gaps here. So we have at the syllable level, 
8 out of 12, and then 6 out of 12. So we can see the student is not completely solid, although that E3 is one that hangs up quite a few kids. And then we have the onset rhyme levels. We have 8 out of 10, and then 6 out of 10 were automatic. And then this was interesting. The level H, so the student was not able to do any deletion, but was able to do all of the substitutions and automatically. So that was really interesting when I saw that. So we have um, three out of five here, three out of five correct, three out of five automatic. And then we have our level I, the student was able to really only do a few. So we have five out of 10 and we have four out of 10. The student was able to do one for level J, but then was not able to do any other. So then we had to stop. So let's take a look at this and determine just based on this, not knowing anything about the student's level of understanding with phonics, just based on this, where do you think would maybe be a good place to start with this student? For more information about online training and materials, visit learn.readintervention.com.